Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is called Galaxies. It's by Sphere Games, and it is the game you play in the dark. It plays one to four players, but there's expansions for more. It takes about 20 minutes, maybe a little longer if you're playing the campaign, and it is for ages seven and up. In the game Galaxies, you're gonna be turning off the lights and getting into the game by basically drafting down planets onto a galaxy board. You'll then be able to select certain planets based on how you place them and put them on your specific galaxy board, uh, which you'll then going to, try to, going to try and score as many points as you can by placing as many planets down in certain combinations based on the game mode. There's a bunch of additional stuff that you can get depending on what you pick up and what expanded content you're using, but the idea is at the end of the game to score as many points as possible based on the combinations of planets you've placed on your galaxies. Let's go and take a look down below. I will show you the game and how to play in the dark. So here's the game Galaxies, and it's set up pretty much for one to four players right now. As you can see, these are all the components. And I know, I know, I told you lights off to get you excited to show you what it's going like. You'll, you'll get it, I'll show you in a second. But for right now, I'm just gonna show you the components because I, I forgot this a little bit. And the components are pretty simple. You're gonna get one of these big consoles here, which is your main, uh, I guess the nebula area. And then you have your little galaxies areas here. They're all in different colors. Yeah, this one is purple, red, blue, and this one over here is yellow. You're also gonna get a big bag full of marbles and you're going to be uh, utilizing these in the game. And these are basically going to be your planets. There's also some green ones in there, which are like gas clouds. Those are, those are no good. Those are the bad ones. Uh, and cards, 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 cards. You're gonna get player aids for the A and B version of the game. In the B version of the game, depending on uh, how you want to play it, I guess, you're going to be taking these blue, these green, and these red galaxy cards and shuffling them up and picking them at random, allowing you to get new objectives, which changes the game completely each and every time you play with a bunch of different combinations. Game A, however, is pretty simple. It's a standard game as to how you're trying to score points. And the idea of the game is pretty simple. You're going to have this board here based on the number of players. You're going to add X plus one, so in a two-player game, you'll have three of these. In a uh, three-player game, you'll have four. And in a four-player game, you'll have five. I think you get the idea of how those work. And you're basically gonna be drafting from this bag here. You'll be placing these things down here based on how you wanna place them, based on what is available. And then when you want to, you can also choose to take them away and cover up the space, which I'll show you about how to exp I'll explain that in a little bit. Otherwise, though, so you're gonna begin the rule book for the game, a bunch of these different colored uh, planets and or gas balls. And of course, the box for galaxies. And and any uh, expansion content that you might pick up as well in the campaign. So that's pretty much what you get. All right, all right, I know you're ready. So let's go ahead and show the game in the dark. So here we have the game Galaxies, and it's ready to go in the dark. I'm playing three players here. I've got yellow, blue, and red, and every player is going to have a, uh, let's see, this little thing here, which is a player reference token card, which you probably won't need after the first game, as well as a positioning little token here, so it can go ahead and block off a space when you take the planets from an area. So how the game works is pretty simple. When it's your turn, we'll go ahead and start with red here. You can choose to do one of two things. You can either take two planets from the bag and place them on this thing here, or you could take any amount of a one column's planets and put them on your board and then cover it after you've taken the planets. Once somebody gets an entire board filled, that will signify the end of the game. Everybody will have the last chance to grab their things. So let's go ahead and show you. So red's gonna go first. He has two of these here and he's got green and he's got white. And basically what you're trying to do is you want to score points based on the objectives of the, of the game scenario. And for game A, it's pretty simple. You're just trying to score straight lines worth of planets. You're trying to uh, avoid these gla gas clouds. If you get two of them in your area, you're going to lose one point for each two. You're trying to get uh, the planets of the same color that you are, as well as scoring the most amount of, I like, guess you score points based on the most amount of a specific color. So if you have five blue here, you would score five points. If you have five red, you would score five points plus five more for having red. And then uh, there's also scoring points for lines. Now there's different objectives depending on the game mode, but that's the idea of it. You're trying to score points at the end of the game based on you setting up your board. So next player is blue. He's going to go ahead and select two. He's got these, who he's got a red and he's got a green. So I put that red there. I put that red there and the green there. Yellow's turn. Okay. We got two more greens here. We're going to block that area off. Nobody's going to want that. That's just minus two points. And these aren't planets. These are gas clouds. Back to red's turn. Now we've got another green and a yellow. So we'll place that there. And red doesn't want white as much as she wants red, so we're gonna go ahead and place that one there. Let's go ahead and get a new one for blue here. Blue's got, ooh, uh, let's go for this one here, and we'll put this one over there so we can mess with red. Uh, yellow's turn, taking two more, 
And we've got a blue and we've got a white one. So maybe like that and maybe like that. All right, now red's turn. Red's gonna get take two here. And red will do something like that. Now blue has the option to do the, draw the last two or he can take any column he or she wants. And I think blue is actually gonna go ahead and take this one here. So when he takes this one here, he's gonna go ahead and cover this area up and can't be placed there anymore. And then he's gonna go ahead and select where he wants to place these. Now the rule for placement is pretty simple. You can place any of the planets in the middle here, but if you're placing a planet on the outside here, so for instance, if I want to place this white one on the outside, it would have to connect to another planet of the same color. So this would be an illegal move, but this would not be. Or if I wanted to place this white one, I couldn't place it here, but I could place it here because it's adjacent to a white one. So that is how placement works. That's pretty much the only idea. Everything else is free, free roam. You can place anything in the middle. And then as long as it's the same color connecting, you can place them as well. Okay, so blue is now done. And there's only one spot left. So yellow is going to have to decide now. And yellow is gonna make this specific choice right here to take these, covering up this space here and then placing it down on the board here. And of course, the last but not least is red. And red definitely doesn't want this. So red's gonna take these guys here and go ahead and place them how he or she wants. Then after that, the remaining, these tokens, so this will get covered, the remaining row that is not used will get taken and be placed into the box or hidden away from sight. And then the next round will begin. You would remove all of these things here and uh, then you place them back for the players and begin again. The person who went out last is the person who was going to go ahead and start and red went out last, so red will take two in place. Then we're gonna go ahead and have blue. I think you're getting the idea of the game, right? Yellow, so on and so forth. So we'll just go ahead and show you uh, placement. So these guys are all gonna come out now. And we'll go ahead and say that uh, red's gonna go first and red will take these guys here. And then she, he or she is gonna select placement, maybe like this and this and this. Then blue will take these guys here and uh, cover, make sure to cover these guys up as well. And then, of course, yellow will go ahead and select to take two here to cover it up and then take these guys here and so on and so forth, covering this one. And then these will go to the bag. That is basically how you play the game. Pretty simple, right? So let me show you what the boards are going to look like now at the end of the game, most likely in, in, in some format. And uh, you'll, you'll get an idea of how points are scored. So I'm just going to kind of put them down. Now, remember, the game will end once somebody fills up their board and never gets that final round to go ahead and score. And you're going to score based on your board here with a special caveat of the middle space being wild. So the wild space can help you in certain combinations for certain things. So I'm gonna guess that probably this is what's gonna look like at the end of the game here is all these spaces gonna be filled. Maybe one or two won't be. So we'll go ahead and just have it like that. And this is how it works. So this is red. So red is gonna score one point for each of these red ones here. One, two, three, four, five. In addition, gonna score one point for the most colored color. So it's gonna be also red, which is five, so that'd be 10. Gonna score one point for every single planet on their board. Minus one point for each, uh, for each pair of these green gas giants. And five points for having full rows of planets. So that would be 10 points here, but not five, but not five over here because this is missing one. And uh, depending on the scenario, if it's a B game, you'll be playing differently, but that's the main idea for scoring for each of these guys. And whoever has the most points at the end of the game is going to be the winner and score. And of course, that is just the basic example of play. There is a B mode and there's also additional content that shows a, what you would want to call a kind of campaign mode for the game Galaxies. But I think you get an idea of how it works. It's basically drafting, selecting, and placing until somebody covers up their board, in which case the game will end and points will be scored. Okay, let's come up. I'll explain a little bit more about the B mode of the game. I will explain the campaign mode, and then I'll tell you what I think about it. So that's basically how you uh, play the game Galaxies. Now, a couple things. I was playing in the dark and I was playing quickly with three players. So mind me, I did not place correctly when I was placing all of them down. Follow the rules and the rules are simple. Around the middle circle, you're allowed to play any color planet, but on the outer circle, you have to make sure that they match with a, a planet in the inner circle. It has to be adjacent to the same color. Uh, so for instance, I'll go ahead and just take one of these guys and show you. Uh, when you place something like this, this would not be legal. Almost none of these here would be legal because they're not in the inner circle. 
but the gas clouds do not care. So lucky you. So this is actually would look like something more like legal placement. If I wanted to place these guys correctly, these reds could attach to each other, no problem. And uh, these yellows here couldn't be played because there's no yellow in the middle, but these white ones can be played on either side here. Then you get the idea. Now these guys here can be played anywhere because they're actually negative and they don't help you at all. Speaking of the green gas clouds, regardless of where they're placed and how they're placed, they're gonna be counted as null spots. They do not give you anything other than for every two, you get minus two, minus uh, one point. Uh, but there are certain cards that can change that and score you additional points and whatnot. And that's not to say that in the campaign mode of the game, they might be beneficial to you in some way as well. But just in terms of A and B mode game, they don't score you points, you just lose points, and they don't help you when you're trying to create, create lines and whatnot for planets. Otherwise, though, I think you get a good idea of the game. You're going to be drawing two, placing them down in the columns in any way you choose, or choosing to take any column you want and placing your little area down, uh, then allowing players to continue doing that until uh, everybody's selected them up to, up to a point when the board is filled and you're going to score points. Uh, this game is rather simple in nature. You only have two different things you're doing, which is, is nice for a type of game like this. It reminds me of games like Sagrada. It reminds me of games like S Azul. Uh, any of those type of little puzzly style games. But what's interesting about this is not only can you play in the dark, which is really cool, and it's actually not very complex to play in the dark. It's pretty easy to do. It's just when you're playing with three players, it's a little more a little more challenging. And once you get the base idea of the game down and then the other cards, uh, simple, simple. I hope to see these uh, player reference cards. I hope they glow in the dark. I think that would be cool as well. Another thing to note is this game by itself on the A mode and even almost to the B mode is kind of like fillery because it's like 20, fillery, 20 to about 30 minutes to play a game. But in the B mode, it gets a little bit more intense as far as strategy goes. There's different types of cards you're using. And let me explain that. Everybody's going to get a secret objective in the B mode mode game and these are going to score you points based on getting the most gas clouds, filling your board first and going out, having the most of a specific color. These are secret objectives. You're also going to choose one red card and one blue card as well as one random card between the two decks and that is going to be your new way of scoring points for game B. So for instance this one says two points for having uh, two of e or more of each color. Uh, this one here is having getting three points for each three uh, little planets that look like a triangle and you get the idea and everybody's playing with those cards but the secret bonus points would give you uh, a nice little edge at the end of the game so it kind of changed up the way you're playing the game as far as from A to B goes and uh, that is the idea I, I, um, the, what's interesting too is I've been looking through the different expansion content that has this kind of scenario mode in which you're do basically doing uh, game one, two, three, four, and you're adding new stuff there's stuff that's added like variable player powers there's wild planets that get added there's white planets that give you more points but they're not colored. You have specific tokens that are used and certain extra cards for each one. Uh, and that actually brings a lot more. And as, as, as far as I'm aware, there's actually a fifth player too. I don't know if that's a secret or not, but there's one on here anyway, so you probably saw it. But uh, hopefully that's going to unlock or you can get it. I don't know how you want to do that. But nevertheless, uh, there's a lot of content coming with it that kind of increases the gameplay by like tenfold. So you'll be able to do certain things. Now, will it be amazing or not? I don't know, but I like the idea of adding more stuff to this game and I think it's very easily doable when it comes to placing down those extra new unique new planets that go into here as well as playing the variable player powers and cards like that take that kind of action I think that will kind of increase the amount of strategy strategy in the game but as a stance it is a solid little game I really really enjoyed this A mode and B mode is even more uh, complex with different strategy whether you want to pull the planets and how you want to choose to kind of formulate them and you think you're going to score a lot of points with certain combinations but then you've turns out that like really placement matters so much you might actually not score as much as you thought because your opponents can mess with you it has a solid kind of drafting feel where you have to decide do you want to be friendly with everybody and hope they'll be friendly with you or are you going to be as mean as you possibly can and then everybody kind of gets dumped on just a little bit which is really really funny uh I personally really like uh, the fact that the different, the way you're having to comb combine these different planets and how you have to combine them, uh, it, it kind of makes you really think about not only how you want to place on your board when you get them, but also where you want to place on the main board and what you're trying to hope players will take as opposed to what you take. And let me give you an example. I know that Grant might want red, right? So I just drew, drew two red. Well, I want this leftmost column. So I'm going to actually place these specifically in another area so he can take them because I know it's going to be better down the line for me 
to take this column. I hope he just doesn't mess with me and just takes that because somebody else might take it. With more players in the game becomes a little bit more strategy as to how you want to place the planets and where you want to place them and the nervousness of kind of uh, pushing your luck too much. You might want to pull out and take the ones you get, but you could wait one more turn and get one extra planet. That might be the difference between five and zero points. So I think that's kind of the idea. I think you get the idea of it. I think players who enjoy games like Sagrada and like Azul are going to enjoy this one as well. While as in game A, it's not it's less complex than those games, but as the game gets the extra stuff that you want to add to it, it can the complexity seems like it's going to increase quite a bit with those things. So be aware that it's going to be a, a, from light to maybe almost medium maybe medium, medium, a little over medium with all the extra content. Uh, I really, really enjoyed this game. I think players who do not like puzzle league games, who don't like a little bit of take that action, who don't enjoy players kind of messing with them may not enjoy this game. The low in the dark factor is, is a big plus in my opinion, and that's the way I prefer to play it. In fact, that was the first thing we did when we got it out of the box. If you like that idea, this might be one for you to take a look at. Galaxies, I really, really like galaxies. All right, guys, thanks for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. If you like this video, go check the rest of our videos here on YouTube. Like, subscribe, and comment, as well as take a look at the game Galaxies, a little puzzle drafting style game with quite a lot of extra stuff that kind of gets added to it. And uh, don't forget to check out our website, unfilteredgamer.com. Tons of blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. We're giving away games on there all the time. We've got two new ones come out this week, as well as our live stream every Wednesday, 7.30 p.m. PST. This week is going to be the game Ignite. The next day, the next week is going to be Brotherwise Games, so a lot's going on there every Wednesday. Don't forget, come on, tune in. You can win a bunch of games. We're giving away a ton of games, so do do so right live on stream. <laughs> As well as check out my friends, everythingboardgames.com, the Giveaway Geek, and uh, all the rest of those great people. All right, guys, that's all I got for you this time. As always, I look forward to playing a game in the dark with you next time.